Saturday in Simpsonville, South Carolina. It's a, a cool day and an overcast day, but uh, not cold enough to snow, so just enough to be miserable and not want to go out in it. I heard a story about a youth minister that took uh, the young uh, middle schoolers out on an uh, RA camping outing, and uh, he was giving them a lecture on uh, proper behavior, and he said, don't do anything in private that you wouldn't do in public. Let me restate that. He said, don't do anything privately that you wouldn't do in public. One of the boys in the back of the class said, hallelujah, I don't have to take a bath anymore. Well, uh, today I want to talk to you on the subject of worry. You see, worry won't stop bad stuff from happening. It only stops good stuff from being enjoyed. And so we need to be sure we understand the three truths about worry. Everyone worries, sometimes, someplace, somehow, to some degree. Worry deals with the future, not necessarily the present. Uh, it deals with things that could happen. And worry can do nothing. <laughs> worry won't do a thing. Uh, concern might cause you to take action, but worry won't do a thing. How did Jesus deal with worry? Well, he dealt with it in three areas. First, he dealt with our needs. Not necessarily our wants, but our needs. Secondly, he dealt with the extra things, that is our wants, not necessarily our needs. And then finally, he dealt with life itself, worry about life itself. So how did he deal with worry in these three areas? In Matthew 6.25, he said that life is more than eating and drinking. And he used the illustration of the birds of the air. And he said, God knows what your needs are. And he'll meet your needs. When it came to extras, Jesus told a story that uh, was very helpful in knowing what he believed about worry there. In Luke chapter 12, verse 15, it was about the rich man whose barns were already full and another crop was getting ready to come in and he began to worry about what he was going to do with the new crop since the barns were already full. But if you remember the story, uh, he told the rich man, you fool, don't you know that your soul will be required of you tonight? and somebody else is going to inherit all that you have anyway. You see, he told him not to worry about uh, the extras. Finally, about life itself, Jesus taught in Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, don't be afraid of the one that can kill the body, but be afraid of the one that can kill the soul and the body. You see, eternal life is something that we should have concern about the fact that we know that we're going to heaven for an eternity and not to spend an eternity in hell. But he said, you don't have to worry if you know that your soul and your body is already taken care of. Uh, he used the illustration again of birds and he said, are not two, sar two sparrows sold for one cent? Are you not worth much more than the birds of the air? Not a single one shall fall to the ground without his notice. Aren't you much more valuable than they? Don't worry, my friends. Maybe you spent too much at Christmas. Okay, what do you do? You pull in the reins a little bit. You pay it off as quickly as you can so you don't pay an exorbitant interest rate. And you don't worry about it. You just take action. Worry doesn't do anything. As a matter of fact, I heard a preacher one day that said that worry is like crossing the bridge before you come to it. It's a toll bridge, and you pay the toll twice. You pay one in anticipation of crossing the bridge, you pay another when you actually cross it. So we're not to worry, but we're to take action based on the concerns that we have. God will meet all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Now don't confuse your needs with your wants. Need may be for a car, but your want may be for a Corvette or a Mercedes. He'll meet your needs according to his riches and glory. And secondly, remember the extras. Be thankful and content with what you have. You know, life's happiness and life's joy doesn't come from material things. 
It comes from things that money can't buy. And finally, when it comes to life itself, if you know that you've accepted Jesus as your Savior, you don't have anything to worry about. You see, no matter how soon you might die, you're going to spend an eternity in a place called heaven that's so wonderful you'll never even compare it to this earth. So there's no reason to worry. We can't control how many days we have left. Only God controls that. Now we can do a few things to try to prolong our life, eat right, take the right vitamins, exercise. But you know, if you're driving down the highway and a drunk driver comes across the dotted line, hits you head on. No amount of worry in all of this world could keep you from that fatality. So don't worry, my friends. It's a new year. Do what you can. Plan well. If you've made some mistakes in the past, get out of them as quickly as you can. But don't worry, because you can cast all your cares on Him who cares for you. Do what you can. Leave the rest to God. That's your thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day.